Everybody, it's the Math Master here. I'm doing a video today about a very controversial subject as usual, and that's Courtney Love. <laughs> I've done a couple of uh, things about what I thought about her in the past, and I still hold some of those things true in certain ways, but unfortunately there's been a few allegations that have come out the last couple of months with regards to more or less uh, being accused of hiring a hitman to possibly kill her former son-in-law, uh, some other stuff like that. I know she's a very uh, much of a lightning rod for a lot of people. And I did defend her in a video, like I think it was almost two years ago now, where I said that she was misunderstood, you know. In fact, my first date with one of my exes, uh, my, our first kiss, <laughs> One of our first kisses was because I, I said, oh, I, I kind of, you know, I kind of defend Courtney Love. <laughs> anyways, that's a long time ago. But anyways, with regards to Courtney Love and uh, what she's coming out with now is some allegations against some celebrities and stuff, including Trent Reznor. Now, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know what I think about the whole thing with as far as groupie culture and, you know, I've defended some of that in the past and how I've looked at these things with a grain of salt as well as a gray area that is there. And I still hold true to that, even if, you know, it gets, it's getting harder to defend because it's like, you wonder where you're gonna be perceived by other people when you defend these things. Fact of the matter is, through time, rock music and the rock subculture, the rock culture has been about youthfulness and sexuality and unbridled sexuality, regardless of what people want to, uh, if they want to brush it under the cover of, you know, and put more wokeness or whatever you want to call it in, as in it. So there is a gray area there that needs to be explored. And I was thinking about it last night, like, uh, you know, you have something as crazy as Nambla, right? But then you have the other side, the other extreme is, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, not have two years age difference with anybody and you, almost like a conservative Christian traditionalist morta mor mortality, morality in regards to this stuff. So we have this polar, like feminist meets prudish kind of uh, sexuality. Feminism meets prudish sexuality on one end, and on the other end you have, you know, things like Nambla or the, what the existentialists or where the uh, postmodernists that were trying to get the age of consent lowered in France years ago. Really weird stuff. Um, so the accusations of Trent Reznor is that he was, you know, him and his crew were, you know, supposedly banging, 20, or whatever you want to call it at this point, 12-year-old girls. And... I think it was Courtney Love that said she might be someone, she might be the illegitimate daughter of Marlon Brando at one point, or like, there's all these weird things that she said over the years that it's just kind of random. And then she says someone raped her or something. I mean, there's a lot of sexual assault stuff with uh, Courtney Love that obviously affected her if, if true, which I assume that some of it definitely is. Um, at the same time, she's come on record as a very, sometimes a very toxic individual and someone that's lied in the past, but more so she's embellished things um, as far as her whole agenda, as far as her whole thing. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm still split on the whole, whole theory of, of Kurt Cobain. Uh, you know, when I did that video, I think it was 2019, defending Courtney Love. Um, actually, I think it was later, 2019. I was on the side of Courtney. Now I'm more a little towards the middle about it because I've seen some things that have... You know, one of the funny things is that I listen to this podcast called Morbid. And they usually talk about like serial killers and murderers and stuff. Murder mysteries. Even some occult stuff once in a while. And they were breaking down the case. And I was like, 
you know, some of these anomalies just make me doubt the whole thing a little bit more, which I never thought I would, but I did. Because I watched some of the documentaries. I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, come on. Like, the Mentors singer, like, you know, the Mentors are just a, I'm not a, I'm, I love Gigi Allen, but the Mentors always bother me for some reason. I don't think they should be banned, but there was this guy that I knew was like, He's like, you don't like, you like Gigi Allen, but you don't like the Mentors, man. Eh, I'm an edge lord. Eh. But <laughs> just kind of mentioning that. So this whole thing with Courtney Love accusing Trent Reznor of having 12-year-old groupies. Now, let's take this as a grain of salt. She probably might be exaggerating. Now, I'm just going to make you imagine, not make you, but not force you don't worry you have my you have full consent to imagine this or not <laughs> um just imagine this so you're you're a rock star in the 90s okay you're on a lot of drugs and alcohol and a lot of pressure and fame and you know all this stuff you have women of various ages probably ranging from teens to 30s throwing themselves literally throwing themselves at you and you know the Marilyn Manson thing is separate from this I believe in my opinion because the Marilyn Manson thing is more of a could be a systemic abuse of power slash you know what grooming I don't like the word grooming when it comes to adults but you know relationship uh, dynamics that are abusive the groupie situation is a little different to me because of just how it unfolds and sure you know there probably were there possibly plausibly were uh underage groupies at nine inch nails shows that went backstage wanting to bone trent reznor now i have a little personal anecdote for that, about that. and i'm not going to try to like sit here and say like uh this this actually affected my life at one point which I didn't really take full advantage of, unfortunately, but when I was a late teenager, I grew my hair out and I was a lot thinner. Um, I've been a lot fatter too at, at times in my life too, don't get me wrong, because if you look at old pictures of me, I look like the marshmallow man, but I was a lot thinner and I had, my face was thinner and I was compared because I've dyed my hair black to Trent Reznor. So I was working at a Walgreens downtown in this, in this where I live. And there were gutter goths, gutter goths, like kind of in between gutter punks and goths. They were basically like, and I was so like, I don't know if I was autistic. Like I've been debating this if I, if I was autistic. I was ignoring a lot of their advances. These girls, oh, there he is. Oh, oh there he is. You know, like in Walgreens, they were just like tr chasing me around and shit. I did have one date as a result of this, but, um, which went really weird, but, um, sort of related and ancillary in an ancillary way related to this whole thing. So girl thought I looked like Trent Reznor. So imagine a lot of, imagine thousands, tens of thousands of women, of girls and women like this. And you're just totally fucked up on heroin or whatever. And you're just like on tour and. You're totally drenched in sweat and you're just like you want to you have so much tension these girls just throw themselves at you are you going to be fucking carting everybody at the door that comes you know especially if you're wasted i'm not blaming the drugs on this i doubt it oh trent Reznor was supposed to like card everybody to see it make sure they're 18 then double check their uh because he's good with technology i guess double check their ids against you know known like high school groupies or some shit i don't it's just it's re, retarded i'm just gonna still use that word stopped or slowed down i was called retarded as a kid anyways so i i have the right to use it just like i have the right to make jewish jokes because i'm part jewish but anyways <laughs> hopefully this won't be flagged by youtube um it's kind of ridiculous because i if if there was some kind of systemic like i could see like you know, like a lot of bands used to have like their their roadie scout girls that were interested in coming backstage and stuff. But Nine Inch Nails doesn't seem like a band like that in the first place. Um, I don't know what her particular accusations are, but I guess she, this was a later tour, I believe, because I don't think Nine Inch Nails and, and Hole toured like in the 
peak years of Nine Inch Nails. So, <sighs> Marilyn Manson's one thing, but I don't, I just don't see Trent Reznor as like an abusive person necessarily. Now, you can accuse rock stars of abusing their power to have sex with, you know, sometimes underage or dubiously aged women. But I just don't see it with Trent Reznor. And I'm not saying that these things didn't occur. I think this is what happened. Um, I think there were, you know, maybe there was like a 16 year, 16 year old that went backstage or something, but 12. I mean, it's just like, unless they were like passed for a 16 year or older, you know, it's just like 12. Ugh. I mean, puberty does happen earlier like than it used to decades ago, but like, I just, the, the credibility, the plausibility is quite questionable about whether or not she's kind of exaggerating or embellishing this story. But I'm sure it happened. I'm sure there were underage girls that had sex with rock stars in the 90s, just as they did in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s and so on. Not in the 50s, because everybody was a fucking prude. But I think we need to take these things with nuance and look at, you know, a spectrum of behaviors and ideas and beliefs. So I'm not defending Trent Reznor per se. I'm gonna have to find out more about Courtney Love too, because this some of this shit is crazy. You know, it's like she gets all this press about about this supposed conspiracy to uh, whatever with her uh, son, former son-in-law, and now we're you know and with a guitar or some that Kurt owned or something. And then all this Dave Grohl drama again. So yeah, just to just to be upfront, Dave Grohl is a is a nuisance. I'm so sick. Of, I'm so sick of Dave Grohl. And Foo Fighters and all that shit. It just like it's like his rocks nice guy come to the Vax concert. Uh, it's just like stupid fucking establishment bullshit. He's just as bad as Eddie Vedder or worse. You know, Jello Biafra. You know, I'll take him in the '80s or '90s any days over those fucking buffoons. Anyways, that's about all. Peace out.